Uh, so welcome to uh, the first in our um, summer, summer training series. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about entering and tracking the bottle costs because uh, most of you are uh, finishing up your bottle runs about now, you know, between uh, June and July, you know, I see you know, people are doing the bottle runs. So you can empty out those barrels and get ready for crush this year. And the bottle runs are interesting because uh, most of the costs for the bottling are, are what we call direct costs. Whereas all the winemaking are indirect costs, we can just throw those into a cost pool and, um, and it's a lot easier. But with the bottle runs, there's a lot of um, additional tracking that needs to happen. So my goal is to show you um, some efficient, you know, three different ways of entering the bottling costs and talk about which you know, is most appropriate for what size winery. That way you're entering the information efficiently. Um, so it, it, what I see often is people put a lot of information in and it just is, it's of no value when we go and do the costing. And, and I know you're busy and I don't want you to put too much information in. I want you to put in just the right amount of information. So Let's, uh, so our agenda for today is to understand the three methods, the three methods, there's the zero step, one step and the two step. And if you've uh, been with us for a while, uh, I, in the past, I only identified um, two methods, the one step and the two step, but um, I've seen a lot of mistakes in the one step and I'll, I'll talk about those. And so we've added the zero step, which I'll show you today. And then we'll talk about which of these methods might be best for your winery. Um, I've got a couple of uh, uh, other forms for you to use to help make your bottle runs complete. And then I hope to have a lot of time left for Q&A. So let's get started here. All right, so let's go to QuickBooks. All right, so over here in QuickBooks, let's look at our chart of at our um, chart of accounts. So in our chart of accounts, we are going to put all of our bottle runs, our bottling information is all down here in the other expense area. And of course, if you've been following my our method, we put all of our winemaking costs in the other expense. If you're not familiar with our method, if you're not familiar with our method, uh, you. We, we have what we call the fundamental five. The fundamental five uh, it talks about the, the five important steps or procedures you need to have set up in your QuickBooks file to make your QuickBooks file efficient. And the chart of accounts is our very first step in the fundamental five. It, for, for an effective chart of accounts, we put all of our winemaking down here in the other expense area. So here we've got our bottling expenses down here. We've got bottling service, glass, labels, foils, corks, and other bottling expenses. So for the most part, the glass, labels, foils, and corks, these are actually direct costs. Um, and then the others are indirect costs, but that's actually not an important detail. Um, all right, so let's look at some examples here. All right, so here's, um, so we're looking at my sample file. Now in my sample file, my information is, goes through 2016 to 2018. Um, and what I've done is I've replicated all the bills from 2018 into 2019 and 2020. So I can show you the three different methods. So let's start with the zero step because the zero step is the easiest of all. And this is the bare minimum of information that you want to enter into the bill. So if I, if I drill down on, on total bottling, I'll get this report right here. I'll get a transaction detail report. And what you can see here is that for my glass, I've entered on my bills, I've entered, you know, the detail that's on the bill. And, and I've entered, you know, the, the shipping and the, the pallets, but most importantly, for my corks, I've got the grand total amount for my corks. And then in my description, and this is what's super important, you want to put in your description the quantity that you purchased 
and then a general description of you know what the thing was that you bought. And of course, it's helpful to type, to spell correctly, but not required. So uh, from M.A. Silva, we bought some corks and we also bought some glass. And same thing on, um, let's see, so we can look at this capsule bill here. Um, we bought capsules and again, here's my quantity and then there's my basic description. So this is the bare minimum of what you wanna enter when you uh, enter your bottling uh, bills. So this is what we call the zero step. And um, what I wanna do is I wanna show you all the three different methods and then I wanna show you how this shows up in the costing book. So stay tuned. All right, so now for the, this is going to be the, the one step. So in the one step, one of the things you'll notice in the transaction detail by account is that under the name, sometimes you'll see the vendor name and sometimes you'll see the customer job. And that is because on the two step, what we do is we break apart the, um, the quantity and we assign it to a customer job, which in this case is one of the bottle runs. So let's go to the customer job list, the customer list so I can show you what, we, what we've got going here. So here's my 2018. So we create these names, these customer job names on the customer list. And these are only used to tag the bottling costs. That's the only purpose for these names. So once we use them, we just inactivate them um, afterwards. So in the spring, 2018 spring, these are my one to my five SKUs that I'm going to be bottling. And then in this 2018 summer, these are all the wines that I'm going to be bottling. So this is where those names come from. And I'm using the ZZ because this pushes these names down to the bottom of the list. So when I go back to my bill, this is how I can tag my glass, my, uh, the glasses, uh, the amount of glass that was used by each one of these um, wines. So what typically happens is you'll get the bill first and, and you won't know exactly how much that bill, uh, you won't know how much, how many cases you bottled until afterwards. So you'll need to, if you, if you entered the bill before the bottle run, you're just gonna put a number here into uh, into the you know the basic glass, but after the bottle run, you're going to use your bottle run report, and you're going to allocate the number of the, you know the, uh, the you know the dollar amount based on the number of cases that you bottled for each of the wines. So that's what I've done here. Um, if you recall, so uh, yeah, so this one right here, this Artisana Bordeaux. This was only used for the rosé, so I didn't have to allocate this, but the, the Burgundy AG was used by these three different bottlings, so I'll need to allocate it out. So there's a lot of math involved with the, with the uh, one step, but, it, but this does give you a way of um, assigning the, uh, the, the, the cost to a specific SKU. Now on our, so this is the, this is, this is the, the one step, the one step meaning the information for the SKU is directly on the bill itself. And now for the two step, the two step is very different. On the two step, when we enter the bill, so let me find, okay, so I should have got, had the bill ready. So hold on a second. This bill, um, all right, hang on. I should have uh, figured out which vendor this was. All right, I, you know what? I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go here. Hang on. I'm going to. I got to find the vendor for this bill. Um, so basically, we we enter the bill a little bit differently, and then um, wait, maybe I can find it here. Sales receipt seven seven one two two two. Nope. Sorry. I did not anticipate this. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, 2020. I know that that's this one. So it's M.A. Silva. Okay, so I need to go to an M.A. Silva bill. Vendor. Vendor. M.A. Silva. M.A. Silva. And this was a 2018 bill. All right. And so in 2018. All right. So on the two-step, 
when we enter a bill, we're going to enter the the um, the 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 component, the bottling component on the item tab. Um, and so here's, so I, I've got items identified for each of my various components. And so then I've got 486 cases of this burgundy glass and there's my grand total cost and there's the, the cost per case. And then my miscellaneous parts are, are booked directly on the expenses tab. Um, so let me find, uh, let's see, find another quirk. Uh, uh, and my, I know, multicolor. Multicolor is my labels. So if I go to my label bill in 2000, oh shoot, uh, label, I forgot to change that. Labels for one book. All right, if I go there for 2018. So again, for my labels, I will also make an item for my labels. Um, and there's my quantity of labels, there's my cost per label and uh, there were no miscellaneous shipping fees. So on the two step, you're gonna enter using the item tab. And then, you know, what makes this the two step is that you're then going to enter, 2018, you're then going to create a sales receipt using each one of the, the customer jobs. So these are the same customer jobs that we saw on the one step. And we're gonna put all of the different components on this sales receipt with the quantity for this bottle run. And it's a $0 cost for, it's a $0 sales receipt. So what this is doing is it's removing the quantity from inventory and then assigning a cost to it. So um, this is why we call this the two-step because first you're gonna enter the bill. And then second, after the bottle run, you're gonna enter the sales receipt. And even though it sounds like it's more work, this, this is actually, really fast. Um, this is best for um, wineries that have, that want, uh, you know, very precise costing for their, their different SKUs. So, um, all right. So let's see where to go next. Let's go to, now there's a report that we pull um, when, when we go to do the bottle, when we go to do the bottle costing, um, and that report looks like this bottling detail. All right, so this bottling detail report, um, so this is for 2018. What we can see here is we can see the, all the different SKUs along the left, and then we have all the different um, components along the top. And as you can see, this is 2018. So if I drill down, you can see that came from the sales receipt. So this is the cost. Um, that was created by that the, the 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 sales receipt, and then we dumped this into Excel. If I were to do this for 2019, this is what I'm going to get. And then if I drill down on this, the glass, you're going to see this cost comes from the bill itself. Now I'm not going to have this report's not going to work for 2020 because 2020 is the zero step, which means we don't assign it to um, a SKU. So I don't have any information for 2020. So I'll show you the next step. All right. Okay, so one of the downsides of the one step is that you can see th because you didn't buy any foils or capsules in 2019, none got assigned. So as it turns out, you bought the foils in 2018 and that cost got expensed and got handled in 2018. So this is one of the downsides of the one step is that uh, if you buy a large batch of say capsules or, or corks, um, you might, you're not gonna capture that information in the current year. So the one step is, is only good for situations where you only buy what you need for your bottle runs. Um, so, you know, th this would be best for a, for a very small winery that has a, a limited number of SKUs. And again, you only, you buy every year, only what you need. You're not buying extra. All right. Okay. So, um, all right, let me show you what this looks like when we're actually pushing it into the costing book. So we're going to take this report, we're going to export it into Excel. And when we export it into Excel, 
Uh, that's the okay. case. So that was technically the one step. When we export it into Excel, this is what we get. So it's all laid out for us. Here's our here's our SKUs. And I've inserted two columns here, one, one to pop in the number of cases and one for the bottle cost. So this bulk cost is going to come from the bulk sheet. So this is one of the pages in our costing book. Um, I, I didn't want to do this because I don't want to complicate things. So um, the this math is already done for you. Now you've of course already done this math because you had to do it when you entered the bill, but in any case, it's all laid out for you here. And the only thing that you have to do now is you just need to allocate the miscellaneous costs. So our grand total bottling cost pool was 56,677. We had $41,000 of direct costs, which left us $15,000 of indirect costs that we need to allocate. And um, by the time we add the bulk cost to this total bottling cost, we get a grand total cost for the wine and then you're, you're home free, you're done with your bottle cost. This column right here shows you the packaging cost per case. And this is uh, just picking up the direct cost. We're not picking up any of the, the indirect costs. For the two-step, this is what it looks like. Um, and what you can see is that you know all the columns are filled in because we put the components into inventory and then we pulled it out of inventory when we um, did that did the sales receipt. So we're not missing anything here, and we're also only counting exactly the number of cases, labels, and capsules that you used for the for the bottling. So you have a much better accuracy for the, um, the bottlings. Now, when you use the zero step, no, sorry. And you still have to allocate the indirect costs um, because you're still going to have bottling service, shipping and things like that. So again, we pop in the grand total um, bottling cost uh, from the cost pool. And then the indirect cost is going to be the difference between the grand total and these direct costs. And then this formula right here allocates this indirect cost. So you get the grand total bottling cost. Now for the zero step, the zero step, um, I actually should have done this a little differently. Um, the zero step, none of this information is filled in. Uh, actually, let me just show you. Uh, over copy, create a copy. All right, so when I lay out my worksheet, I actually don't have any information here at all. I'm, you know, I'm gonna lay out, you know, I gotta type in the, these names, I gotta type in my cases, lay out my cases. There, there's no information here at all. And, but what I do is you come in here and you plug in the grand total that you spent on glass, and then you're gonna allocate this cost based on the number of cases. So all this math is done right here in the bottling cost book. Um, same with this one here. This is the grand total number for the labels, the foils and the corkscrew. And then, you know, again, these are just formulas right here on the worksheet. But what you can see is that the packaging cost per case is identical for all the wines. So this is totally fine for a small winery um, that has, um, that has uses the same package for their wines. And even if you had a slightly um, more expensive glass for your reserve wine, this number really is close enough. Let me show you the comparison here um, between these different costs. On um, my two-step, I'm getting a more precise cost. And, and sure enough, my, my reserve wines here are more expensive than my, my light rosé. So the two step is the most accurate because you're only counting the number of uh, parts that was actually used um, to, to make this wine, to bottle this wine. In the one step, because you're using the grand total bill, um, you're, gonna, you're gonna overbuy. You're gonna buy a couple extra cases of glass. You're gonna buy extra labels. You're gonna buy extra corks and you're just, and you're assigning that cost to the wine. So these, these costs are a little more inconsistent. You know, look at this rosé is, is getting a much higher cost than it really should have. And then the Zinfandel 
for whatever reasons, maybe use some glass that was left over to bottle the Zinfandel, it's not getting um, really a proper cost. So whereas the two-step, yeah, granted the two-step gives you a smaller cost for the reserve wines, but you know, the, what you need to ask yourself is, is that close enough? Back in the day, I used to think it was really important to be precise, but really it, you want to think in terms of what number is useful for you. If you sell in the distribution channel and you have wines that are specifically made for the distribution so that you get a good margin, then you need to do the two-step because you need to know, you know, what that bottle cost is. These, this wine right here, the 17 Best Blend, this is made for the distribution channel. They, they're using lighter glass. They're using one plus one corks. And so that for, for this winery, it's important to know. But if all of these are just sold through um, DTC, it's not important to know the distinction between the, bottle, the bottling costs. And so the zero step is really fine. So the point I'm trying to make is that for many wineries, the zero step is fine. The one step, even though the one step is a procedure that a lot of people are using, but it actually is not very accurate. And for all the time that it takes to do the allocation, a lot of times I end up not even using this information and, and, and utilizing the zero step instead, even though they went through all the time to break out those bills. And then the most accurate is the two step. Um, uh, the only, the only, the, the tricky the tricky thing about the two step is after every bottle run you need to true up your inventory so let me show you let me go back to quickbooks here when i pull up uh if i pull up an inventory report you're actually going to see the packaging costs on down here at the bottom so here are all my packaging costs let me get rid of that and so after every bottle run you need to go in you need to true this up because you're going to have, you know, the capsules are going to get munched. You're going to have glass that's not usable. And um, it's a simple process in QuickBooks to chew this up, but it's a step that you have to remember to do. Um, but the cool step, the cool thing about the two step is that you can see an inventory of how many of all these parts you have available. It does take time to set these up, um, but um, you do get more accuracy. So what the bottom line is your best bet is to use either the zero step or the two, the, the best bet for a, a small winery. Let's see, let's go back to Excel here. Your best bet for a small winery is just do the zero step. It's faster, it's simpler. If you purchase only what you're going to use, for a bottle run, go ahead and use the one step. Um, but keep in mind that if you're using any leftover material or if you're buying extra so that you have leftover material, it's not going to be accurate. And then if you want the most accuracy, you're gonna to wanna to use the two-step method. Um, uh, it, the two-step takes a little bit to set up, but once it's set up and, you know, you, you, and you're moving along, it's, it's actually quite fast. So that is, those are the three methods of entering the bottle runs, the zero step, the one step, and the two step. Now to get this information, there's two documents that you need to have that um, I see so many wineries not doing. Okay, and first of all, the first document I call the bottling game plan. So the bottling game plan is where you're gonna lay out what your, and this is done in advance. This is done before your bottle run. You're gonna lay out what you're gonna bottle, how many cases you estimate that you're gonna bottle, and what kind of what you're gonna what you're gonna buy, you know, what what what's the bottling component that you're gonna use? What, who's your supplier? And same thing with closures, capsules, labels, and other. So this just gives you um, this puts all in one place. Uh, what the parts are, how much you have, how much, how much you're going to bottle. If you give this to your bookkeeper, when the bills come through, they're going to know, you know, what this Burgundy was used for. This Burgundy AG went into, you know, these four, these four wines. So this is the bottling game plan. This is done in advance. 
then the, the report that I never see is the bottling report. So the bottling report, um, date of the bottle run, you can put the name of the SKU and then you, can, then you enter how many cases and bottles of each format. Um, this is the, the number that actually rolled off of the bottling truck, not the amount that went to the warehouse, the amount that actually went to the bottling that came off the bottle run. You can re-enter the packaging details. A lot of times you have to call an audible and change up the packaging details on bottling day. And then he, this is where uh, you also put down, where did all this wine go? So if you write off the first and last off, then go ahead and put it here. Put two cases that you wrote off for first off, last off. Um, it, it's so funny. The winemakers are so excited when the bottling when the bottling is done, um, they forget to um, write down these very basic details of exactly how much was bottled. So that is bottle runs um, in, um, in a nutshell. So uh, where do I wanna go back to? I wanna go back to this one here. So um, uh, I know that was a lot of information um, really quickly. What, um, go ahead and pop a question in if you have, if, uh, you want me to go over anything, because obviously, you know, we don't, I don't have time to teach you all the steps of how to do anything. Um, you know, my goal was to show you what the three methods look like, and then, um, you know, highlight some, uh, uh, uh strengths and weaknesses of each of the different methods. So does anyone have a question for for me. No, let's see. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, Steph, are you seeing any other questions there? I'm not seeing any questions uh, come through yet. Um, I was just going to say if, um, if you want to unmute yourself, I have everyone muted at the moment. And you can just simply unmute yourself and ask your question. Um, all right. Well, let's see. What's so, Stephanie, since you were listening in, what do you think I glossed over? You know what I, I know? You know what I know I glossed over? I glossed over how these numbers tie to the costing book. So let me let me do a split screen here. Yeah, let's put this guy down. All right, so um, let me go here to the zero step. So on the zero step, we, um, you know, the, this information, again, you know, you, you don't, you, you don't get that nice tidy report because we didn't assign any of these costs to any of these SKUs. And instead, what we're going to do is we're going to plug in down here at the bottom, the, the total cost for the glass. So if we come down here and remember we're in 2020, so 2020 is my example for the, for the, uh, zero step. So here's my glass. 15584. Well, um, here's my label cost, 7113. Here's my foils, 8314. And here's my corks, 11643. Um, and then I also have my grand total bottling, 56667, which comes from that number right here. Then once I put my formulas in on my uh, bottling worksheet, um, then these numbers get allocated right here on my worksheet. Um, now for my one step, now on my one step, I was able to get this nice nifty report. Let me show you how this report is laid out, bottling detail. So this is a report that I memorize. Um, I call it the bottling detail. And this report is laid out like this. This is a, um, custom summary report. So let's go here. 
I'll set up for you. So this is a custom summary report. Ooh, I do need to show you QuickBooks Online. So hold that thought. Uh, I'm going to display my rows by customer. I'm going to display my columns by uh, account list. I'm going to go 2018, 01, 01, 01. Uh, actually, this was 2019, 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 9. And then for my filters, I'm going to just pick my bottling filters, my bottling expenses, sorry. Vineyard seller, crush, direct bottling. I'm gonna pick those, not my bottling service. I'm just picking my direct costs, glass, label, foils, and corks. And uh, that, um, sorry, a different, slightly different setting. There's a couple of these, uh, the choice for the uh, display columns by, um, there's two different ways to do it. Yeah, that one, I like that one better. So the, the choice was income statement, columns by income statement, rows by customer. And that's how I get this nice nifty um, bottling report that I then just export into Excel. And I'm three quarters of the way done. So then to get this number right here, that number comes again from my profit and loss. So my profit and loss for my bottling is 56 67709. So that's that number. And my so my indirect costs end up being my grand total bottling minus my total direct bottling. And uh, same thing for my two step is going to be 59. 5911 came from that number right there. So these numbers tie directly to the costing book. So you know where these numbers come from. Correct. Yes. So Linda, that is correct. With the zero method, you're, you're um, allocating the entire cost of what you purchased. And so there's no inventory. Now, what you could do, and we, there's always a challenge that, um, you know, so many wineries, the, the bookkeeper is what we refer to as the reluctant bookkeeper, who's, you know, a non-accounting professional. Um, they're only doing the bookkeeping because it's a teeny tiny winery and you know they're 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 stuck doing it thus the name reluctant bookkeeper so I'd, I'd like to keep the zero method as simple as possible but there are going to be situations where um you're going to buy you know some extra corks um and you and you know that you're going to use them the next year in, in that situation you're going to need to uh, let me go to a, uh let me go to a cork bill you're going to need to do a journal entry to move some of these corks, you know, uh, into another into another year, and you know that's you know that sort of question and, and exactly how to do that is a really good question for um, you know if you're a Silver Club member, but that's a good question to ask exactly how to do that. You know, it, there, there's two steps to it, so um, you would you could. Bottling inventory, let's see. Do I have a packaging inventory? Do to do, you would go, whoops. You would you would book it here. So let's say half of these were used. Um, you're, you're saving these for later. So 1641.6. So this is gonna be what's, oh great. What's half of 5,700? Didn't mean to pick such a hard number. Divided by two. 2850, 2850, corks for 2021. Um, but then the tricky part is now you got to do a journal entry in 2021 to bring this back into your expense. So it, it, you can have, you can carry inventory um, um, and you should, if you, especially if you, you know, if you have a lot of quirks like this, because this is going to really throw off your, your costing. So, um, so that, that is doable. Um, all right. So I do want to show you, um, while we still have some time, um, what QuickBooks Online looks like. So all of these steps um, work exactly the same in QuickBooks Online, except for the two-step. So here is QuickBooks Online. 
So the problem with QuickBooks Online is that um, is that the key to making so the one the zero step and the one step totally work just fine. Um, the two step, the key to making this work is setting up your items. So if I go to uh, sales, products, and services, and I come down here to my to to do, come on, come on. Here we are. Here's a cork. Okay. When you set up your items, when you set up your items in QuickBooks Desktop, the the key to making this work is on your item. The expense account is is going to be the the other expense down there in the other expense area. But QuickBooks Online won't let you do that. So we have to do an extra step. We have to act. It will only let us use a cost of goods account. It won't let us use an expense account to point this to. So we have to um, we have to point it to. So we have to point it to. So this X here is for my. This is actually where I'm. You're going to see. You know all those sales receipts show up, and then I've got to do a journal entry at the end of the year to move this down to the other expense area. So I I don't recommend the two step in QuickBooks Online because as you know, I want your PL to um, I want you to be able to use your PL without, you know, in the middle of the year without having to do any journal entries. And if you were to pull this PL at uh, one eight, if you were to pull this PL in the middle of the year, all your glass parts are going to show up and that's going to mess up your cost of goods, which is going to mess up your gross profit. So I don't recommend the two-step in QuickBooks Online, but most of the time QuickBooks Online are our smaller wineries. And so the two-step is really not an efficient uh, procedure for a small winery. It's really best for a winery that has say 8,000 cases or more, six to 8,000 cases or more. And that is, you know, really trying to dial in your distribution sales versus your DTC sales. So uh, if you're in QuickBooks Online, you're really going to want to do the one step or the two step. I'm sorry, the zero step or the one step. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Let's see. Oh, here we go. Oh, let's get, all right. Um, Stephanie, what do you think? What else should I talk about? I think it's been, um, I think it's been very educational in terms of that. Um, what about um, now, how does um, the bottling um, um, course um, oh. give you additional information on that end? Okay. All right, good question. All right, so a couple places where you can get more information is, so we have a couple places where you can learn more. Um, if you're not familiar with our setup and our fundamental five and our whole philosophy of how we set up QuickBooks, um, recommend you do our Discover QuickBooks for Wineries course. It's a short, quick little course. Um, whoops, sorry. Um, otherwise, you know, our, the, our, our, Foundation course is the Fundamental Five course, which shows you uh, and walks you through step by step setting up your QuickBooks files so that you have all the Fundamental Five parts set in place. Um, we have another course, the Costing Book Checklist course. This walks you through setting up the entire costing book between the bulk page, um, the bottling page. The bottling page that I showed you is just one page in the costing book. Um, now we do have a bottle run mini course, which walks you through step by step how to set up all these parts that I showed you. However, we just discovered that uh, the resolution on the video um, has gone wonky. Uh, it's, it's some of my, um, yeah, we're not exactly sure why, but I'm having to, I'm, I'm going to have to re-record the Bottle Run mini course. And I apologize that I didn't get this done before today, but Stephanie will hold me to the fire and make sure that I get this done. So you can purchase the Bottle Run mini course separately um, if you want the details of exactly how to set this up, particularly for the two-step. Um, 
or you can also join our Silver Club. The Bottle Run mini course is part of the learning library. And then you can always pop a question into the forum um, or join us during our live uh, office hours uh, to get specific answers to your situation and which one works best to you, best for you, and how to actually handle the, the bottle run procedures. So any, any other questions? Oh, golly. Um, kind of feel that I skipped over a bunch of stuff. So I feel badly here because I usually run out of time. Um, let's see. Well, I guess since we have time here and I don't see any questions, uh, let me show you uh, what the uh, item should look like here in um, QuickBooks Desktop. So in Desktop, here are, you know, again, uh, I use the ZZs frequently to push this sort of information down to the bottom. So here is, um, here's the setup for um, a, a, a packaging part that is part of the two step. So I'm, I'm going to give it a name. Um, I'm going to, for the COGS account, instead of pointing to a COGS account, I'm going to point to my FOILS capsule account down here in the other expense area. For my income account, it doesn't matter. We're never going to use this item for income. So just some sort of miscellaneous other revenue. And then the asset account is going to be this package inventory account. Um, so the capsules are pointing to capsule expense. Uh, let's go to a glass. So my glass is going to point to my bottling glass, other expense account. Uh, my labels are going to point to my labels. And uh, what else? Uh, foil something. Yeah, yeah, so capsules, pork. So, um, well, you can actually see here, you know, even though the heading here says COGS in QuickBooks, QuickBooks desktop, you can point to a, a random um, expense account. You don't have to point to a COGS account like you do over in QuickBooks Online. Um, now, the tricky part of getting um, these set up is you want to think in terms of styles of wine. Um, not so much the specific um, uh, part material from your purchaser, because you might purchase um, a Bordeaux um, antique green from one bot bottling person, one bottling manufacturer. Uh, you could buy it from two different bottling manufacturers. They're going to have two different part numbers. You want to have a generic name for your names. Um, because it doesn't matter what the part number is from the manufacturer. What matters is, you know, what the style of, of glass is. Now you can see here that I've got a heavy burgundy glass and I have some regular glass. So this heavy is what I'm going to use for my, um, my reserve wines. So it is a little bit tricky getting these set up, getting these parts set up so that you have parts identified without going into too much noodly detail um, for them. One of my wineries doesn't even bother to put the color of the glass. They just go for, as far as they're concerned, the Bordeaux and the Burgundy glass are all about the same cost and it doesn't matter the, um, the color. So they just use one glass item and that saves them a giant amount of time. Um, they say that's close enough. Now that particular winery does have some specialty glass. So then they'll call out their specialty glass. Um, and as you can see, I've got some magnums here as well. So with the two step, the tricky part is just getting these items set up so that you're using them consistently between how they're booked on the bill and then how they're used on the sales receipt. Um, and if we're talking about the two step, because the two step, you do need to clear out you the you need to update the inventory at the end of the um, at, at the end of every bottle run. So at the end of every bottle run, the crew should count how much is left over, and they should be doing this anyway, because you you want to know how 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 well did you purchase the the uh, the parts? You know how close were you? So, but to clear it out, we're going to go to inventory activities. We're going to go adjust quantity value on hand, and I can find all my items right here. I can come down here 
And I can see, I'm going to update all these parts right here. Okay. And, and then um, this is where I would put in how much I actually had left over that was usable. And I had uh, capsules, we munched a bunch of capsules. So we really only had um, 4,000, 7,000 left over. Um, corks, we had 1,500 left over, 500, 900. And the screw caps, we had 1,750. Uh, and we had 25 cases left over. And the accounts you're going to use to, and this is going to be true up, um, usable packaging material. And the account that you're going to use is um, uh, your COGS other account. Um, uh, we also have an account called inventory adjustment. That's a cost of goods account. So this is all going to get written off to a miscellaneous COGS account. I'm not going to do this because this will mess up my books. Um, so again, if, if you're using, you know, because when you purchase material, you're always purchasing over when you do the one step, all that overage is getting assigned to your, um, your, uh, your bottlings, the, you know, the, the finished cost of your wine. And that might be okay that, you know, if, if you're doing a good job of purchasing and I've seen a lot of small wineries, you guys, you know, you know, you, you have a really good handle on how much wine you're going to bottle and, and your material purchases, that could be totally fine. You know, a case or two, or, you know, a couple extra capsules, that's not enough to throw off your costs. It's when you have a lot of, a lot of parts left over, you know, where you've, you know, maybe made a mistake with your purchases. That's where your costs um, get, uh, um, you become inaccurate. And, and not useful. So. We had a question from Casey okay. asking what are typical indirect bottling costs? Okay, so you, okay, so the, the typical indirect bottling costs are gonna be all of your, your bottling labor and then um, all of your shipping costs. So um, you'll, you'll notice in the, um, in the two-step, we only record for the cost of the bottle, the actual cost of the bottle. We don't record the, the shipping costs. Those, uh, those get unassigned, so which means that they end up going into the indirect costs. Um, and then, um, uh, yeah, I was just, um, right, yeah. So, um, and that's why, again, where the two-step is the most accurate because the two-step, you're only paying for the cost of the, the, the thing itself. Now, things get a little bit tricky because one, one supplier is going to include the shipping in the cost of their glass and another supplier is going to sell you the glass and then charge you the shipping on top. So you're going to have to know your suppliers and try to be consistent with how you're, you're booking it. Um, you know, that... Uh, that situation, you know, where one supplier charges, one supplier buries the cost of their shipping versus another making it more visible. Um, those are things that we just can't always anticipate up front when we, you know, when we set up these procedures. So um, let's see. Uh, so actually, if I go to, if I go back to here to profit and loss, oh, you know what? Let me go to my... Um, Transaction detail report for 2018. So when I when I pull up my transaction detail report for all my bottling costs, you can actually see which costs end up in as indirect costs. So here in labels, these are all direct costs because they're directly associated with a SKU. But this barcode dues that's going to end up in indirect. All this shipping is going to end up in indirect. You can see that the, um, the you know, the, the cost was not associated with a specific SKU. So by definition, that becomes an indirect cost. And then down here in other bottling expenses, we have all this bottling service and bottling labor, this equipment rental that ended up in indirect costs. And, you know, if you're trying to get me to give you a number for what's reasonable for indirect, 
uh, can't do that because all these, you know, these, these nuances are so different. You know, a lot of, um, you know, with labels on your label bill, you're going to see extra charges for plate charges and, you know, or if you silk screen, you'll have a cost for each bottle, but then they also have a cost for silk screening. Well, that silk screen cost is actually going to end up in indirect. So, you know, that winery is going to have a lot more indirect costs than another winery. Now, some of this stuff, um, some of the, you know, with anything with costing, there are philosophical differences. You know, some people will say, well, that silk screening cost should be part of the direct cost. I'm not going to argue philosophically whether or not it should or shouldn't. The key thing is to be consistent. So when I record them, I don't include the silk screen cost. I don't include the shipping cost. And I only get into a head scratching situation when the winery switches suppliers and the supplier has a completely different pricing model than the one that I was using. And sometimes we just have to just roll with it and make up a new, make up a new policy. Okay. Um, what haven't I talked about? Well, we were, I was really hoping with these, um, you know, these summer trainings to, you know, get to know some of you folks, some of the questions that you have, but you, but you're all being really quiet. So <laughs> I wasn't planning on talking so much. Um, Stephanie, what else, what else you think? Um, the only other, I guess, comment I would just mention to everybody attending is that if, uh, if you are interested in receiving or seeing the recording of this video, this webinar, we will be probably by the end of tomorrow, we will have it posted both on our blog and on our YouTube channel. Um, if you have any questions directly um, or any follow-up questions, you're welcome to reach out to us at our email info at qbwinerysolutions.com and we'd be happy to address those questions offline as well. Okay. Let me do a recap of the three different procedures. So we have the zero step, the one step, and the two step. On the zero step, we are going to find that here one more time. 2020, we are going to enter the information directly on the bill, and you're going to put a nice memo that shows the quantity that you purchased and a description of what you purchased. And it's a zero step because it's all you, you just, you're going to do it all in this one step here. On the bottling, uh, we're in the costing book on the bottling sheet, this cost the cost for all of the glass, so 15,583, is then gonna be allocated to all the different SKUs that you bottled based on the number of cases. And that math is gonna be done right on the Excel worksheet. So super fast and efficient to do that. And by having the, the, the notation that shows how many you actually bought, the, your cost accountant can do a double check to make sure that the cost per case is reasonable. All right, so that's the one step. And I and the one step is totally fine for just about everybody. Um, uh, if, uh, the, the, more, the most important thing being putting the details of what was actually purchased on each bill. So then we have the two, the one step, sorry, the zero step is appropriate for just about everybody because you have all the details listed. Right now, now we have the next one is the one step. And we call this the one step because, I'm gonna pick a little easier one. We call this the one step because we're going to allocate the cost to the different SKUs right on the bill itself. Now, technically you're gonna do this in two steps. You're gonna enter the bill when you first receive it, and you'll put the grand total number, dollar value for the cases here, just like you did the zero step. And then after the bottle run, once you know how many cases were actually bottled, you're gonna come back, you're gonna allocate that cost to the different SKUs. Uh, but we call this the one step because all this is done right on the bill itself. 
And in the in the transaction detail report, we're going to see the SKUs that were that were bottled, and we're also going to see in some cases the uh, indirect costs are going to show up as well. Okay, and then oh sorry, and then on the costing book, you're going to be able to get the nice neat report straight out of QuickBooks. So all this math right here is gonna be done by QuickBooks. All you have to do is calculate the indirect costs. But the downside of the two-step is that you have to make sure that you purchase everything each year. So the two, sorry, the downside of the one step is that you have to purchase all the parts in the same year. So this procedure is best for folks who only purchase exactly what they're going to use in the bottle run. In, in a given year. Uh, once you start having, buying extra, you know, extra corks, extra capsules, then we start have to have to add some additional procedures in order to make this, uh, keep these numbers accurate. And then last of all, the two step is where you're going to enter the bills. Uh, in the first step, when you enter the bill, you're gonna pay it to um, an item. So let me again find that so we can see that vendor, 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 vendor center. All right, let me go to this bill here. Um, yeah. Let's see. I wish I could find MA Silva. Okay, let me go to MA Silva and I'm going to go here to 2018. So on the bill, you're going to um, create items for each of the parts. You're going to put the quantity and then any indirect costs related to that bill will go on the expenses tab. So that's the first part of the two step. The second part of the two step is to create a sales receipt where you're going to, um, uh, you're going to record all the different parts that were used on this bottle run for that SKU. And this will be a $0 sales receipt, but it will hit the the cost will hit the, um, the, the label expense account. And the beauty of this one is that, again, you're going to be able to get this nice, awesome report straight out of QuickBooks. QuickBooks is going to do all this math. So this is really good for those of you who have, you know, say six, you know, 6,000 cases or more, or that use a slightly different glass um, and slightly different parts for, for everything, for, for all your SKUs. Um, it's also valuable for those of you who want to know really detailed costs for your bottle runs. So uh, again, here's a comparison. On the zero step, everything's gonna have the same cost, which is totally fine. Uh, that this number, is still a very useful number, even though all the you know all the all your wines have the same bottling cost. On the one step, yes, you do have a little more uh, variation and detail as to you know this uh, reserve is more expensive than the the regular Pinot, but then you also have you can have situations where the costs are just not reasonable at all. So the one step you have to be very careful if you're doing the one step to make sure that all the costs are included and that you're not including, you know, excess um, capsules and excess labels. And then finally, the two step is the most accurate. It takes a little bit of time to set up. So I don't recommend it for folks who don't need this level of detail. Again, this winery uh, has wine that they sell in the distribution class. And so they want to have you know, keep a close eye on their margins for those wines. But if you don't sell in the distribution class, just stick with the zero step, you'll be fine. All right. So hope that helps. If you have any other questions, uh, reach out to us and um, love to help you out. I uh, hope you'll catch us on our next one. Um, so next month uh, for our training session, we're going to talk about uh, samples and pours and revisit how samples and pours are uh, managed and handled in the QuickBooks file. And again, samples and pours is one of our fundamental five, but it's the last one that we talk about. And I think a lot of people who do the fundamental five course gloss over that one. Um, so we're going to revisit that um, next July. July, I don't know. Anyway, we'll send you the email, let you know uh, when that's coming up. 
And then the last one that we're going to have in August is all about grapes and um, efficient and effective ways of tracking the grapes inside QuickBooks. Um, yes, Jeffrey, we do have a mini course on grapes, um, but uh, we have to double check it to see if the video is working. Um, and, you know, I may have to re-record it, uh, but there is a mini course called Grapes, Grapes, Grapes. And um, all righty then, anything else? Okay, thank you all for joining us and um, hope to see um, hope to see you guys um, on the next one. Cheers. <laughs>